At the core of each person there is a desire and yearning for God. Different people try to fulfill the desire with different things. Some try to fulfill the desire with money. But no matter how much money they acquire, no matter how many luxury cars they buy, they are never fulfilled. Some try fulfilling this desire with a relationship, but that never works. Others try to fulfill that desire with drugs and alcohol, but all these things fail. At the core of each person there is a desire and yearning for God. They can deny it and suppress this yearning for Him and live an unfulfilled life. There are those who come to know God and there are those who don't. For those who know God, it is so clear to them that God is and that God has always been. From everlasting to everlasting, God has always been there. For those who come to know the gospel, it is obvious to them. It is abundantly clear that there is a God who created the heavens and the earth. It is abundantly clear to them that everything couldn't be here by accident. The world and all its complexities couldn't be formed by an evolutionary coincidence. For the people who know the gospel, it is so clear to them that God created them, that He formed them, that He designed them in His own image, and that human beings are not animals, and that they are not a mishap of the evolutionary process. They are created by the Almighty God. All of these things are abundantly clear to those who have come to know the gospel. But there are those who see the gospel as foolishness. They see the gospel message as a made-up myth, although history proves the gospel message is true, although there is historical evidence that proves that there was a man called Jesus who walked on water, who raised the dead, gave sight to the blind, made the lame walk, cured a woman with the issue of blood, died one Friday and died the deaths of deaths, there is historical evidence that Jesus died. He didn't faint. He wasn't in a coma. He died for three days and was resurrected on Sunday. There is historical evidence of this. There are eyewitness testimonies of this outside the Bible that validate the truth of who Jesus is. Yet for some people, the message of the cross is foolishness. And for others, that very same message is the power of God. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 18 For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. I asked myself how one message can be preached, and there are two groups. The answer is also in the Bible. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 3 to 4 And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. You see, 2 Corinthians 4 verse 3 to 4 reveals to us the great deception setting in. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 3 to 4 reveals to us that there is an actual person making an effort behind the scenes to keep people from being freed from darkness. There is someone who is making an active effort to blind the minds of people towards the gospel. Paul refers to this entity as the God of this world. Paul is describing the work of Satan on earth. Ephesians 2 verse 2. We do know that the devil is the God of this world. This is why he was able to offer Jesus in the wilderness, the kingdoms of this world. If Jesus would worship him, Satan is the God of this world and he is busy actively blinding the minds of those who don't believe in Jesus to keep them from seeing the glorious light of the Gospels. This is one of the reasons why the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Some people are deceived by the God of this world and others are not. Another reason is the Gospel message is light. Look at what Paul says. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. The gospel message is light. And what do we know about men? John 3, 19. 
And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Men have a proclivity to love the dark rather than the light. They love darkness for what it hides. It hides their sin. The difference between Christians and non-Christians does not rest in their guilt. It lies in their attitude toward Jesus. Those who are saved are not better than those who reject Christ. They are simply sinners. Acknowledge their need for a savior. They are simply sinners who confess and believe. The message of the cross is true. It is true truth. It would be true if no one believed it was true. If the whole world rejected it, it would still be true. If not one person in the world believed in Jesus Christ, the gospel message would still be true. It is true in itself. But why do people fight with their conscience if they know this is true? The answer is simple. The gospel message reveals to us that we are all guilty and people even go far as deceiving themselves to say they are not guilty but they know they are. Who wants to hear that they are guilty? Who wants to hear that they will have give account for the secret sins that no one knows about? That is why people suppress the gospel message, because the gospel message points the finger at you, you, you and me, and tells us that we are all guilty and have fallen short of the laws of this infinite God who has set requirements for us that we haven't met. The gospel message points the finger and tells us that we are all sinners who need a savior and that we cannot save ourselves. But people do not like this because they know they know they haven't kept the savior's commandments and that they are guilty and they have offended and disobeyed a God who is eternal, infinite and holy. Therefore they are guilty, but their conscience suppresses this truth because if the truth be told, who wants to know that an everlasting God is angry with them? Who wants to know that every one of their actions, thoughts and deeds will one day be examined? Who wants to know that all their sins will be judged and the punishment for each of them are everlasting? But what the God of this world blinds their mind to is that God is a forgiving God, that if you confess your sin and repent, and turn away from your wicked ways and accept the Lord Jesus as your Savior, you will be saved. But the God of this world has blinded their minds to the solution. The solution is not to run from God, it is to run to God. God is not a man. He won't hold grudges against you. Once God forgives you, you are forgiven. Even if the people around you don't forgive you, God will still forgive. The people of this earth can hate you, for all the things you did in the past and all the things you did to them in the past, but they do not dictate who God forgives. Go to God, confess your sin. There are several salient verses in the scriptures that we often do not pay good attention to, and this passage is one of them. Embedded in its lines are mysteries that have eternal relevance. Well, this teaching will help us to bring back to mind the great power of God that is unleashed for our salvation and also help us to appreciate God for the great grace that counted us worthy to be numbered among the saved. Our salvation is the greatest gift of God to mankind. Unfortunately, not everyone will accept it. Hebrews 4 verse 2 says, For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. The same message that was preached to us that got us broken at the foot of the cross was preached to others, but they remained in their sins because the word did not mix with faith in their hearts. What if faith was missing when we heard the gospel that eternally transformed our whole being, spirit, soul and body? If we take the grace of God from our lives, we will realize that we would have been worse than any of those sinners in our neighborhoods. The same message that reconciled us back to God is the same message that will stand to condemn some people on the last day. The great commission which Jesus gave us before his departure from the earth must not be taken lightly. 
especially as we can see that the signs of the end are being fulfilled. The gospel message remains the power of God to save sinners. Therefore, we all need to preach it.